Megan Hudson, and I'm a Homers Consultant. I would like to show you the resources for parent-led math courses in the Homeschool Hub. So let's log into the Homeschool Hub and take a look. I am logged in to my parent account on the Homeschool Hub, and I am in the Courses tab, which shows me all the different classes assigned to my child. I'm going to hop down here to Math 4, 4th edition. I'm going to press the Details button, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit. About midway on the page, I see this button called Course Resources. When I press that, I have another folder called Online Resources. And once I click on that, it's going to pull up a lot of resources for Math 4. Previous editions of Math 4 had a CD on the back cover of the TE. On the Math 4 4th edition, those extra resources are going to be found on the Homeschool Hub. So that's what these resources are. Let's take a few minutes now to look to see what's in each of these folders. I'm going to start by downloading the Enrichment folder. Inside of the Enrichment uh, PDF, I have 85 pages of more practice that is going to be similar to what we studied that day for our lesson, but it's going to put a little bit of a twist on it. Maybe it'll make it a little bit harder. Maybe they're going to put a spin on it to make your child think about the same topic in a slightly different way. But this is extra practice. If my child needed something more challenging than his worksheet, this would be a great way to get that extra practice and to make it a little bit harder. So these are the enrichment pages. You can print these out as needed. You can fit them in as you want to. These are, again, just extra enrichment pages. The enrichment answer key is also provided for you. This is just the answer key to those enrichment pages that we just looked at. The next thing we're going to look at is the extended activities. The extended activities are games or activities that you can incorporate into your lessons. They are split apart by chapter. So they give you different examples or different games you could do by chapter. And again, these are things you can incorporate into your lesson each day. They are great for visual learners or those tactile learners that need to feel the math to be able to understand a concept better. Some of these activities do require items from your manipulative packet. And these are the extended activities. The next thing I see is the fact fun activities. So these are games or other activity suggestions for ways to practice your fact families. Instead of just multiplying using the flashcards, maybe you want to incorporate a game or other little activity to help practice those fact families. And there are several suggestions that you can incorporate into your practicing for those fact families. I also see that I have fact reviews. These are half sheets of paper to practice more fact families. There are pages here for addition. There are also pages for subtraction. There are pages for multiplication and division. And again, these are just half sheets of paper. You can incorporate these however you feel you need to in your lessons. And then you also have the fact review answer key. And then this is just the answers to those fact reviews. So all the answers to those half sheets. And then we have this an instructional aid folder, which is also another big document. This one has 79 pages. So these are pages you would want to print out before you begin teaching the lesson. And in the bottom left corner, it will tell you which lesson you would need this sheet for. So this one says for use with lesson 10. The next one says for use with lessons 10 and 47. So these are pages you would use to help present your daily lesson. There's also a cumulative review answer sheet at the end of every chapter. There's a quick cumulative review. You can do a, a Scantron type answer sheet for those if you would like to practice standardized testing methods. And again, you can print these sheets out as needed and then use them with your lesson and presenting the lesson each day. So those are the instructional aids. 
There's also an answer key to those instructional aids as well. And then I see this math background folder, which is an interesting document. If you've ever been curious about math fluency, this document will show you how things line up from kindergarten all the way progressing through grade six. Why do we learn certain things in kindergarten? Why do we learn these things in first grade and then see how it builds upon itself as you're progressing through your elementary math? This document also defines some of the common math words and properties. And finally, in the Math 4 folder, we have teaching tips. This is just some suggestions for scheduling and preparing for lessons. Also, how to use manipulatives in your lessons. I'm going to hop back now to courses. And we are going to look now at some of the other classes. So that was Math 4. Some of the other courses have some different files. So in Math 1, let's see what's different here. Again, I went to course resources and then online resources. The first thing you might notice is that some of the files are broken into pieces. One of the first differences I found was this reproducibles A. These are similar to those instructional aids that we saw in Math 4 and things you might want to print out ahead of time to help you prepare for a lesson and present the lesson to your child. There's also a visual packet. These are pictures and charts that you might want to print out to hang up in your classroom or in somewhere in your house where your child might see it so they can practice those skills. So that was the biggest difference in Math 1. Going back to courses. So let's hop now into Math 2, third edition. And again, I'm going to course resources, then online resources. The first thing I noticed in Math 2 that was different was the reteaching pages. Sometimes a topic might need extra practice. Maybe you didn't get enough practice in the lesson for that day and they're struggling through their worksheet and you want to be able to go through more examples without having to use those worksheet problems. These reteaching pages are a great way to do that. They're real quick one side pages just with extra practice. On the bottom left corner you can tell when to use these reteaching pages. It will tell you for instance, on this one says Math 2, Reteaching, Use After Lesson 4. There is not one of these for every single lesson, but there are quite a few lessons in here that you would have the option to do these reteaching pages. The other thing that I see that's new in the Math 2 is the Math 2 Reviews Answer Key. When you get a Math 2 textbook kit, it comes with a student review book. The answer keys for those reviews are in the hub and that's what we're looking at right now. These are the answer keys to that review book. Okay, I'm gonna hop back to my courses. Math three is very similar to math two, so we're not gonna take a look at that one, but instead let's hop down here to math five. So we are in Math 5. I'm again going to go to Course Resources and then the Online Resources. There's a couple different things here. First thing I noticed down here at the bottom is the Work Tech Solutions. Sometimes in your Teacher Edition book, you may see that S symbol. That means there is a worked out solution for that problem. Here's those worked out solutions for you. So it shows step-by-step -step answers of how to get to the solution to help you grade your child's work a little more easily. The other thing that I see different in Math 5 is the daily review answer key. So there are daily reviews in the student book for Math 5. Here are the answers for those daily reviews. I'm going to hop back to courses one more time and we're going to look at Math 6. So I'm in Math 6. Again, I'm going to go to course resources and then online resources. One of the first things I noticed in Math 6 was they changed the name of the enrichment pages to say application. 
So these are the same as the enrichment pages. These are extra practice, something similar to what you would have done in the day's lesson, maybe adding a little twist, making it a little bit more challenging. And you can work these in as needed throughout your lessons. The other thing I noticed in Math 6 was the daily reviews. You can print off a copy of these daily reviews as needed. Again, these are those daily reviews that are not necessarily related to that day's lesson, but this is where you're reviewing things you've done previously in previous lessons to keep those skills fresh. So that was a brief look into some of the math resources available on the Homeschool Hub. After you assign your child their math class, I'd love to encourage you to explore the additional resources available to you on the Homeschool Hub. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your local Homeworks by Precept consultant. Thanks for joining me. Hello.